morning and welcome to St. James's Episcopal Church on this third Sunday in Lent. Our service of Holy Eucharist Rite 2 continues with the opening acclamation. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Please kneel as you are able. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. You shall not make for yourself any idol. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen, Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen, Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen, Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen, Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. We say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings from Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, O congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded them. They camped at Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of 
Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst. So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in singing Psalm 63 responsibly by half verse. Oh God. The Holy Ghost of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. So Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. 
a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so I may never have to be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. And Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you've had five husbands. And the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true, the woman said to him. Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worship on this mountain. But you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews, but the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seek as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he the one who is speaking to you. Just then the disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking to a woman, but no one said, what do you want or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and complete his work. Do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages as a gathering fruit for eternal life. So that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows, another reaps. I sent you to reap for that which you do not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans in the city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. And many more believe because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe. For we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this truly is the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you.
I speak the name of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. The last time I was asked to preach, I had to seed five minutes because of all else was going on in the service. So I... So, Are you going to make up for it? Can I make it up today? <laughs> Actually, it's probably a good thing to preach less time than it took to read the gospel. <laughs> I was at the 745, and believe me, I've got it down pat. You can't wait to the 1115 one. So let's set it in context. We've been doing, last week, we, we studied this scripture in Bible study, and because of the lateness we got over there, we only had about 35 minutes. And this passage really takes a good couple hours, but I'll spare you. Why did the Jews hate the Samaritans? Well, they hate them the same way Republicans hate Democrats and Democrats hate Republicans. It's just, it just is. It just, it's like, wet, it's like the McCoy and the Hatfield feud. It started out, but, you know, when the Israelites moved into the Promised Land, Jacob bought a certain part of, of that port land and dug a well. It's a deep well. It's at least 100 feet deep. In 1935, according to the, some of the records, they, they dredged it or drained it, and they found it was actually 138 feet. It is a deep well. Your next question is, well, how high was the water? I have no idea. I didn't say that. So I imagine it's a lot of water because it's been there for years. But over the years, the different tribes settled. Ephraim and Manasseh settled in Samaria. And what happens when you read uh, 2 Kings chapter 17, you know that the king of Assyria came down and decided to take over Samaria. It was a, it was a city. And he besieged it for three years. It finally fell, and they, he took about 28,000 Samaritans off with him back to Assyria, which is what the kings did in those days. It happened to the Israelites. It happened to the, the, the Judah. When Nebuchadnezzar came and carried them all off to Babylon, and you move them around so you keep them discombobulated, so they won't be able to, you know, gather their senses back to, to form a revolt or to go on strike or anything like that. Some Jews hate the Samaritans because Samaritans began to intermarry. Because those who were left behind, the king of Assyria sent other people from other countries there, and they intermarried. And that's a no-no to the Jews. In Babylon, the, the, uh, God said, Increase, multiply, build up your strength, you will come back to Jerusalem. So between the two of them, and then the Samaritans worship on Mount Gerizim, Jews, Jerusalem. The Samaritans only have the first five books of the Bible. They don't have the rest of the Hebrew Bible, only the Torah, the Pentateuch, that which was written by Moses. And they see Moses as their great leader, and they figured the Messiah will be a teacher, someone who will teach them when he comes. Jews see, the, say, as Jesus says, salvation comes from the Jews because the prophecy is that he will be of the line of David. And he'll be a Jew. So that's some of the difficulty. And if he accepted water from a Samaritan, he would be unclean, which means he'd have to be out of community. I mean, it is a, just this enmity between them. And then the disciples say, and she says too, you're talking to a woman. We don't talk, men don't talk to women. In those days, women are chattel. They're given in marriage, bride price. Paul didn't say much difference in the epistles. If you want to ask a question, have your husband ask in the assembly. I love Paul. So, the, so why don't men talk to women? Because you caused us to sin. You gave us the apple.
<laughs> it goes back a long way. And us men, we're so dumb that we said yes. But if you hadn't given us the apple, we could have been perfect, a 10. <laughs> but no. So that's the scene. So Jesus comes in, and Jesus, the people would leave. If they were in Galilee and wanted to get to Jerusalem, they would walk east, cross the Jordan River, come all the way down, cross the Jordan River again, and then come in to Jerusalem and Judah. They would have no way going through Samaria. Jesus is the Messiah, and he's very intelligent. He knows that the shortest distance between two points is straight line. Down he comes. So he encounters this woman at the well. And she is absolutely enamored that he told her everything about her. How many husbands she's had and then she's living with this other person. And she just can't get past that. And she talks to him, but she has no idea what he's really talking about. This living water. You don't even have a bucket, she says. It's a great dialogue. And then she says, but then she kind of pushes him. And she pushes him about the way the Jews worship and the way the Samaritans worship. Well, you, you say we worship on Mount Gerizim. You say you have to worship in Jerusalem. And he says to her, there'll come a time now when we'll worship in spirit and in truth. You understand, that's what we do every Sunday, except in Lent. Our service opens differently in Lent. But in a regular Eucharistic s service, what's the first prayer that we say as we come into worship? The colic for purity. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. We're like that woman. We just affirm that, that God knows everything about us. And we don't, regardless if we got new clothes, old clothes, or anything else, we stand equal before the Lord. And then we say, by, the, by your Holy Spirit, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts that we may be perfect, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify. So you worship that. We worship in spirit and in truth. And Jesus says that when we worship, the spirit intercedes in our spirit. We have given the spirit our baptism. And when we worship, we, we, there really is that preparation for worship, that when we come in, ask the spirit to help us to worship. And we worship in truth. What is truth? And Jesus will say that he is the Messiah he is the Christ. He is the Son of the living God. And we worship Jesus and get to know more about him as he says, you will get to know my Father. You'll get to know all about who God is and what it means to be in truth and in spirit. But I want to get back to that living water. Have you ever had a dry period in your life? Ever had those times when you wondered if, if God's ears were full of wax or cotton balls or maybe you had a headset and he's listening to something entirely different? Ever felt that God maybe turned away or that you've kind of wandered off like that lost sheep but you're not hearing anybody calling your name? You're not hearing anybody, any f footsteps coming to find you? that dry period. Jesus promises that if you only knew what I had to give you, the gift I give you, living water. I had a professor in, in seminary, Henry Reiter, in pastoral theology. He was a great professor. And he said, what we have to do is we have to be able to receive what God has given us. And he said, more often than not, what we do is we keep a closed hand and we say, I want this pencil. And so we try to, we're helping, we try to give the pencil. But it's, and you can jab all you want to. But the person, 
the person has to open the hand. So in those dry periods, when you and I meet those dry periods, we come to worship, we hold ourselves out and say, Lord, give me that living water that I may not thirst, that I may be whole, that I may hear the promises that you give us in scripture and in voice. Those dry periods, I've had some friends and I've gone through it where we've said, well, we'll call, but the best thing to do is call another friend, come over and pray. Call several friends to lay hands on us and pray for that. Go find some place that you know where, where you believe that God is, that there's a sense that God's presence is here. I had friends who've gone to cemeteries and sit and talk to those who've influenced their lives in a good way. I have others who've said they take a big cup of cold water and just sip it and remember the promises of God. We don't want to be like that woman who only basically made it to the hors d'oeuvre of the heavenly banquet. Got all caught up in Jesus telling her what she knew all about her and missing out on the spirit and truth and the living waters. It is a promise that God has given to each of us as we come to worship to allow the spirit to worship within us that we will receive that which we need to enhance and to continue the work that God has given us to do. Amen. Amen. of the people are form four, found on page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletin. Please kneel as you are able. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, 
Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all in our congregation who are grieving and in need of care as well as those who provide care to the grieving and those in need, especially our Stephen ministers. Please join me in lifting up to God those who have asked for our prayers, especially Mary Lee Allen, Linda Barnett, Steve Barnett, Paige Nance Brock, and Betty Cox. We pray for renewal and refreshment for John while he is on sabbatical. May his time away be life-giving and restful. In the Diocese and Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Right Reverend E. Mark Stevenson and all bishops participating in the House of Bishops meeting. We give thanks to the lives and ministries of all who celebrate birthdays this week, especially those who celebrate their birthdays today. Evelyn Batter, Darcy Lloyd, Virginia Nexon, and Ashley Peace. In the short and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, we remember Andrew, who died recently, and Lucy Gordon Sutton and Frank T. Sutton III. In his memory, the greens at the altar are given. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will, and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask, Grant for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. You share a sign of peace with one another.
All right, good morning again as we welcome our children back from Children's Chapel. It's good to be with all of you on this time change Sunday. I know it's hard to get up for this service because it feels an hour earlier. If you are new or visiting this morning, we would love to um, get to know you and, um, and just know who you are if you feel so called. There is a greeter in the back um, who's wearing an Ask Me name tag. So um, if you are new or visiting, please be that person. and. Um, and we would love to get you to connect to St. James's. A couple of uh, things going on this morning. First of all, um, our Power of Community in a Season of Transformation Adult Forum Series continues this morning. Um, we will um, have um, Damon from Peter Paul, who's going to be interviewed by Anne Hurt. Anne, yeah, Anne Hurt. Um, and Peter Paul's mission is to support the neighbors of the East End and educate its students, equipping them to serve as positive contributors to their families, communities, and society. So Damon and Anne are going to be having a conversation about community and transformation. The second option is Doug's Lenten Bible study called WWYP, What Would You Preach? They are looking ahead at the week ahead at the Lenten Gospels, so please um, join them in discussing that question, what would you preach? Uh, that Bible study meets uh, in room 201 in Misha House, so on the second floor. Um, <clears throat> this coming uh, Wednesday, our Wednesday night dinner and um, fun do mentals class continues. So we hope you can join us for dinner or the class or both. Uh, please see the information in the e-chimes to let us know you're coming to dinner. Also, this Thursday, we have our second Interfaith Dialogue Night with Beth Ahaba. So we'll be meeting here this time um, in Valentine Hall. We'll be talking about uh, symbols and signs and calendars and time in the Jewish tradition and the Christian tradition. So the clergy from both congregations will be there. We'll be catering dinner from Joe's Inn, and we um, hope that you join us. So please email me to let me know you're coming just so we have an accurate count for dinner. A couple other things. It's not too early to order your Easter lilies uh, to decorate the church for Easter. So if you would like to contribute a lily as a memorial, please email Venny in the church office. And then next Sunday, the Dillon Mass is happening during the 9 a.m. service. So the West Gallery Choir, the Guitar Ensemble, um, and the Guitar Ensemble will perform songs uh, by Bob Dillon um, as the music for our 9 o'clock service. So we hope to see you there. Finally, Doers Doing has a lot going on this month, so please check your e-chimes for ways you can help um, our work with SCAN and help with the James River cleanup. Walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
this time. Any children who want to come up the rail and uh, watch our Eucharist service from up close can come on up. Thanksgiving of Eucharistic Prayer A begins on page 361 in your Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. 
Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please kneel as you are able and join me in praying our post-communion prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.